So joining me now to help translate all of this is Tyson Slocum. He's director of the Public Citizen Energy Program. Um, Tyson, does it really have to be this complicated? Uh, no, not at all. Uh, it's actually very simple to take steps to control uh, pollution from mercury. Uh, as uh, you just pointed out, power plants are the single largest source of mercury pollution. Almost half of all of the mercury pollution on the planet comes from coal-fired power plants. So when you are crafting regulations to go after greenhouse gas emissions from power plants, you're also, by design, going to be controlling emissions from mercury. But in addition to all the global efforts around climate change, there are additional United Nations global efforts to control mercury. In 2013, the United Nations put together the Minamata Convention on Mercury Pollution that refers to the Japanese seaport town uh, that uh, experienced toxic levels of mercury product, uh, pollution from uh, chemical uh, refining. And so what that uh, agreement in 2013, the Minamata Convention, just focuses on an agreement to cut down mercury pollution. We've got 128 countries that have signed on, and the goal, in addition to controlling mercury pollution from power plants, is also to eliminate mercury in commercial products like batteries and paints within 30 years. So I do think that the world recognizes the dangers of mercury uh, pollution, understands that we can significantly reduce the sources of uh, contamination that's introducing the uh, ecosystem. And I think that the world is coming together uh, to take steps to, uh, to reduce harm. Focus, or perhaps maybe we haven't heard uh, as much about mercury emissions uh, compared to the other greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and some of the more common uh, causes there. Well, I, I do think that the scientific community has become so alarmed at the impacts of climate change and global warming that that became kind of the biggest international priority in terms of controlling emissions. But again, when you are controlling emissions from a coal-fired power plant to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, you also, by extension, are going to be reducing mercury uh, pollution from that power plant. So you're able to, to achieve both goals by trying to reduce the amount of coal-fired power plants operating around the world. But there is uh, other things to be done. You're right that, that mercury isn't as sexy a scientific topic as climate change is, but it, is, uh, it, it can be just as devastating. And we're seeing uh, huge problems with this neurotoxin uh, and its impacts in the environment. But again, this, this Minamata Convention does have 128 countries signed on to phase out uh, the use of mercury uh, in commercial products and to have agreements to control mercury pollution from industrial and power plant sources as well. So Tyson, for the average person, seafood is one major way that it enters the human body. Um, can you tell us about some of the types of fish that are the most vulnerable, what uh, people can avoid, and, and really how dangerous is mercury to humans? Right. So mercury uh, does something called bioaccumulate in organisms. So as a result, predator fish, particularly tuna, that are eating a lot of smaller fish, if those smaller fish contain trace amounts of mercury that have gotten there from uh, power plant emissions or from runoff in rivers from gold mining operations, that tuna, by eating a lot of smaller fish, is going to bioaccumulate larger amounts of mercury in its system. And so when we eat that, that delicious piece of tuna sushi, uh, if that tuna has been contaminated uh, with mercury exposure, uh, uh, humans that ingest it are going to be contaminated as well. So far, this isn't a huge widespread problem. It's, it's still okay to, to eat tuna, but we have to be aware of discrete areas of pollution and we've got to understand that any effort we can do to reduce the levels of mercury being introduced into the atmosphere and directly into the water is going to be uh, uh, the best possible outcome to have uh, as healthy a fish population as possible. All right, Tyson Slocum, thank you so much for your perspective.